Okay, so it goes. But as you brush the strings, you have to catch your thumb on that fifth string. It's called the fifth, not the first. You can do it here. You can do it here. Practice the strum with the catch. See that thumb catches. Let's try it about ten times. One, two, just the strum. strum two or three strings. I don't want to strum them all. I don't want to do that. I want to get top two or three. Now let's put them together. The pick and the strum with the thumb catch. Okay? So it'll be pick, strum. Two, three, four. catching that thumb with the strum. Remember, thumb and strum rhyme. So strum, thumb. Another angle here. See, I'm really getting, I'm really hitting that. I'm really hitting that. Now here's step three. If you think you've got that down, Okay, it's very simple. You just let go of the thumb. Kind of upwards and outwards and downwards, but not real hard. Just let it happen. Now those notes are not even. They're not bump, bump, bump. There, bump diddy, bump diddy. Dun da da, dun da da, dun da da, da. Don't go any faster than that. Let's do it real slow. One, two, three, four. With the other fingers, plunk with the thumb. If you're totally confused and baffled and mystified and can't do it, do it real slow. Okay, that's something to practice. Might take a week to get that. And then it'll slowly get faster and faster, and then you can start playing the chords. Hmm, how do I do this? Hopefully, you can see there.
was playing the melody and the chord at the same time. Here's just the chords. So those are the three chords. Let me try my right hand here. right there, I braced my index finger with my thumb. Sometimes when you have a succession of notes, your finger isn't strong enough, so some people do that. And I, I started out playing like that, and some people I know do that, and some don't. Anyway, in the future, I'm going to show you different tunings and and some different songs because to just play in G is is a pretty sterile sound. I mean, you can play a lot of beautiful songs in G and everything. But let me show you the second tuning that would, you would use. It's called sawmill because you might want to screw around with this in, in the meantime. You can find out a lot about sawmill on the internet. Sawmill tuning is when now one thing when you're playing G your starting note is always here because you're in G and that is a G note okay sawmill you could call a modal G tuning it's neither minor nor major so when you say that right away that means there's some kind of Irish influence on it and that's exactly what it is it was the Irish influence with the African influence, with the European influence. But when you hear this modal stuff, and all the, you don't have to know anything about the word modal, except that it's neither major nor minor. When you have a, if you have a guitar player is playing along with you, you'll want them to play a G modal chord or a G minor. That'll both work. And then find other chords that would go with it. E minor a lot of times you go from a G modal to an E minor in these type songs and then to a D but you do not use a major okay so this is sort of minor surely not major but it's a hundred percent modal it's a modal scale it's it's a instead of an eight note scale the melody you're playing you're using five notes ever that's it um, You'll be using more left-hand techniques with this tuning, like sliding, uh, and, it, and it really sounds like mountain music. So let me show you how to do that. It's very simple to get a modal tuning, to get G modal tuning. We're now in the tuning of open G. All we do to get sawmill, it's called, or G modal, is to tune the B up to C. That's all we have to do to get sawmill. Hello, tuner. Okay, I'm going to try to try to get that. Okay. So the B goes up to a C.